Innovarius Nice Therapeutics presents Alternative Thoughts in Oncology. Warning, graphic content. Tumors aren't pretty. You know, the first time I saw a tumor fall off of a dog into my hand on a scalpel blade through the use of immunotherapy involving carboplatin and hyperthermia, I was hooked. Here's a presentation on immune biological rationale for hyperthermia and cancer treatment by the University Hospital of Erlingen, Department of Radiation Oncology. When people ask us other papers, we'd like to say, oh yeah, and lots of them. There's been lots of papers published over the last 20 to 30 years. And these papers talk about the use of hyperthermia as a tool in order to stimulate an immune response. In other words, using it as immunomodulation. We found in other videos that we've used it as a form of um, neuromodulation, but in oncology it has been used as a way to stimulate the immune system to create a vaccine in the body and use the tumor itself as the sample that would help to create the vaccine. In this method the tumor is kept in the body and heated under the presence of uh, different sensitizers like uh, carboplatin and ferrohene and metformin and others. And the idea is to create a vaccine uh, from the tumor while inside the body. When people ask us if it's safe, we like to let them know that the treatment for this was developed in humans. So uh, this technology was tested on thousands of humans before we ever tried it on any of our animal patients. We'd also like to bring out that before it was ever tested on humans, it was tried on thousands of animals before that. The technology has been around for quite a while. The basic take home message from the humans was cure tumor, turn the heat on. So what about veterinary medicine? The University of Tennessee did an early pilot study. In this study, they took the worst of the worst animals, the ones that had failed. Conventional chemo and radiation of tumors were too big to resect and tried them with a combination of carboplatin and 434 megahertz and the results were an immunotherapy 85% tumor response rate across that population. At about the same time we were trying carboplatin and hyperthermia in a dog named Bailey with osteosarcoma of the soft palate. After about week three we had an immune response where the tumor was trying to fall out and we actually helped it just with our finger, no scalpel, coaxed the tumor out of the soft palate, pulled out other chunks found that the surrounding tissue was soft and pliable with a healthy granulation bed and we decided to sew it without refreshment just to see if it would heal and it did. About a week later he had returned to normal, he was happy, he wagging his tail. Billy went on to live for about another nine months with quality. It just shows the power of this technology for being able to provide a cure where we can and hospice where we cannot. Here's uh, anal gland adenocarcinoma treated with hyperthermia and carboplatin. We directed the needle into the tumor and injected it with carboplatin and heated from the outside. After about three weeks it had walled off, took the patient to surgery and were able to take out a walled off carcinoma from around the surrounding tissues, close it and let him keep his rectum and his quality of life. Here's a little bit. She came in at 14 years old with a melanoma in the back of her throat, deemed inoperable by two or three specialists. She sought an alternative and found us. And we did a slow, over a two, three month period, we were able to take this really nasty tumor in the back of the throat, work on it. And after about two to three months, it started to uh, come out. And we just helped it come out and took out our scalpel one day she said you know i think this is falling out dog i got you know i think you're right if you don't mind i'm going to try to take this out we did and here are the results a few weeks later she had healed of a fistula uh, it's important to note that she came in at 14 and she had another melanoma on her rear end that the owner didn't want to treat and this particular tumor the, the one in the mouth had shrunk and gotten smaller we removed it and also the one on her rear end never grew and she died at 16 and a half from unrelated causes to melanoma. We think it's just old age. This is a prime example of what's called the bystander effect. If you can create an immune response against a primary tumor in the body, it is possible to have an immune reaction against that tumor's daughter cells. Here's another extreme case showing uh, lymphoma of the chest cavity involving about, oh, about 80% of it. Um, 
A technology like this gave us the option to provide quality of life for this patient for 865 days before it died. Um, after a few months, she was breathing easier. Um, we would continue to do treatments about every month or so with heat over the chest, and um, it did improve quality of life, like this and in many other cases. Here in mast cell tumors, really hard ones, um, we were able to treat for about a month prior to removal, and then that allowed us to have minimal margins, and we were able to go do surgery in what previously was an impossible area with pretty satisfactory results. In this case, we were able to remove the tumor. Here's the tumor on our table. And essentially what we were able to do is to provide another option, time with quality, um, using a mean with minimal side effects. What we basically did was collect knowledge from all over the world, what had been done in Europe and Australia and South Korea and Ireland and others, and united them to help our animal patients. We began a unique collaboration between the UK and ourselves and uh, really developed some great protocols to help our animal friends. What we have here is a terrible case of osteosarcoma involving the maxilla, a dog deemed impossible to treat by many folks, and usually it's true. In this case, we used hyperthermia, but not in combination with any chemotherapy. We used a cancer vaccine instead. We used hyperthermia to wall off the tumor for about a month and then remove and debulk the tumor. We presented the tumor for the vaccine uh, manufacturing at the Morphogenics folks over in Tampa. They shipped us back a vaccine and we did hyperthermia and the cancer vaccine. The results speak for themselves. What we were able to do is buy time with quality, with no chemotherapy, only hyperthermia and a cancer vaccine produced exogenously in this case. We've been using this technology at a high clip for about 10 years. There's not enough time to show you all the pictures of tumors on very old dogs deemed impossible to remove that were removed and managed using a combination of hyperthermia, carboplatin, maybe nanoparticulates or glucose metabolic inhibitors or immunotherapy. Basically, hyperthermia can be used in, as an adjunct or the fourth pillar of oncology with many types of currently used chemotherapy and immunotherapy drugs and the net effect is to augment them. Many folks ask, where are the studies? Are there any studies on it? And the answer is yes, there's tons of studies. There's been studying this for 50 years, mostly on the human side. There are papers on the vet side, but the net effect is that it was tried on animals first so that it could be used in people. And then it's been maybe not, let's say, perfected, but augmented in people, and we've been able to use the same information and bring it back to animals. It's a pretty, quite amazing story. The machines used in people are big, um, usually with lots of power, have to use water boluses, kind of bulky, and you need a few engineers to run them. Uh, recently, improvements in the technology have made it smaller, portable, lighter, meaner, leaner, cheaper, all the right reasons to be able to use it in a vet practice, otherwise we just wouldn't have had access. Now, everything that we're talking about with this type of protocol is the backwards way. We want to actually stimulate the immune system before we take out tumors. So it's really about creating a immune response against the tumor. So basically we're creating a vaccine in the body using the tumor as the sample, the body as the lab, a device as a Bunsen burner and certain chemicals to sensitize the net effect. Uh, the future is really exciting as it doesn't involve chemo at all, but some ancient rust. Iron oxide nanoparticulates, um, we came across them from the human studies and found that they were using them to act as a nano target. It took us a few years to get some, but we finally got some here in the shape of Farahim. Here we're using a magnet to uh, actually hold it and show you the effect of its magnetic properties. It's kind of cool fluid. We use it because it attacks cancer cells. We can target it with our specific machines at resonance is meant to vibrate them and um, are basically able to get immune responses in many animals without the use of conventional chemotherapy. And, you know, we're not saying it's perfect, but it definitely is a great way to manage cases like these that otherwise would be hopeless. We work on the tumors by heating them up, sometimes two, three weeks, and then we'll go ahead and wall them off, kill the infection with the uh, 
um, iron oxide and the um, hyperthermia and resonance and then be able to get results where we're able to take things off that before were impossible. We're collecting data, we're making friends, we're looking for partners to help us continue to do research. A recent study published by the University of Central Florida showed retrospectively that we had definitely made a dent and improved the standard level of care with regards to survival time. The message is simple. We've learned a lot from the humans. And what do they say? Cure tumors. Turn the heat on. 9th Therapeutics are non-invasive cellular electroceuticals for reduction of inflammation and return of normal function. The medical arts are changing rapidly. If you want to know the secrets of medicine, then think in terms of how energy, frequency, polarity, and vibration affect phase transitions of water and bodies on a nano and on a macro scale. Increased knowledge of phase transitions and their role in biology and how radio frequencies affect them are going to revolutionize medicine. What you saw here means nothing if it can't be reproduced in your animal hospital. Call us and ask us about our research licenses. We have an ongoing pain and neurologic study looking for animals with neurologic symptoms such as loss of function, pain, or anesthesia, or loss of appropriate reception. We're here to serve. Nice therapeutics. Nice dog.